Hello and welcome to this edition of FYI Weekly, your official source for the latest news and information from the City of Greensboro. The City of Greensboro's comprehensive plan draft called GSO 2040 is available for review on the City's website. Residents are encouraged to share input on GSO 2040 by completing a short survey before February 28th. The planning department's process for updating the comprehensive plan included public input and conversations, as well as current data about Greensboro, consideration of existing plans from city departments and community partners, and a review of trends affecting cities across the country. A comprehensive plan is a city's overarching guide to growth and development, and its policies are a roadmap to guide the community to a shared vision of the future. Some of the key issues identified during the process include offering more options for housing and neighborhoods. Approximately 67 percent of residents live in one or two person households and the majority want more walkable places to live, providing better access to services, recreation and work. People also want more choices for how to get from place to place and not be solely reliant on cars. Finally, how we work and shop will continue to change as technology evolves, which will impact businesses. To review the GSO 2040 draft document, please visit the city's website. The Greensboro Police Department is hosting a series of community meetings to discuss how police and residents can work together to make communities safer. As part of Chief Brian James's effort to connect with and be inclusive of community ideas, senior leaders with the Greensboro Police Department will be present to hear directly from residents. At the meetings, residents will have an opportunity to meet the commanding officers who serve their community and have an opportunity to discuss public safety issues in their neighborhoods. Those in attendance can ask questions and voice their concerns about safety in an effort to spark ideas on how police and residents can address those issues. Greensboro residents and business owners are encouraged to attend any of the meetings and share their thoughts about public safety. The meetings scheduled in February and March will begin at 6.30 p.m. and end by 8 p.m. The meetings will take place at recreation centers and libraries across the city. For more information or questions about the community meetings, call the Greensboro Police Department Office of Community Engagement at 336-373-2636. The Greensboro Youth Council, or GYC, is now accepting applications from teens who are interested in leading and serving their community as an executive board member or a community event chair. The application deadline is Monday, March 9th. Becoming a board member or coordinating an event are excellent opportunities for teens who want to develop their time management and public speaking skills while networking with other teens in Guilford County. These leadership roles can make earning service learning hours fun. Most volunteers earn more than 80 hours each year. For more information about the available positions, visit the GYC website and click on the Service Learning and Leadership Opportunities page or call 336-373-2734. In an effort to help each of us improve our quality of life, the city has partnered with Cone Health for a series of brief and informative videos designed to inspire you to make better choices when it comes to healthy living. Let's check in with our friends at Cone Health for today's news for your health. Addiction is a disease that affects your ability to make healthy, rational decisions. And it's one of the primary health concerns of our time. Let's talk about it. What is addiction? Addiction is a complicated issue. Addiction can look like a lot of different things, but primarily we associate addiction with the loss of control over a certain substance, uh, alcohol, drugs, or a certain behavior too. It's really important to understand that addiction impacts your brain. On a fundamental level, addiction essentially rewires your brain to where you become dependent on the drug or drink or the behavior, and you start to associate that with survival, which is why you often see people make really irrational decisions and do things that they would never do if they weren't addicted. Anyone can be at risk for addiction. It doesn't matter your race, your age, your gender, uh, your socioeconomic status, your level of intelligence. So what are some of the signs that you're dealing with an addiction? One of the ways uh, that you can tell is by asking yourself four simple questions. Have you ever felt like you need to cut down on your drinking? Have you ever felt like 
You were annoyed when someone criticized you about how much you're drinking or drugging. Have you ever felt guilty about how much you're drinking or drugging? And finally, have you ever had a drink or drug early in the morning, what I call an eye-opener, something to kind of get your day started? If you answered yes to two or more of these questions, you may be struggling with an addiction. So what are the signs you can look for in someone else who you think might be struggling with an addiction? One of the key signs is isolation. If you find that a loved one is continually getting further and further isolated and leaving you out, leaving you in the dark, not letting you know about what they're up to, if they're also giving up on activities or interests that they used to have, reducing their level of activity. Another sign is if they're drinking or drugging more than they plan to. If someone tells you, I'm gonna have two or three drinks tonight, and it ends up being four, five, or six, and then the next day, it's the same thing. That's a sign that your tolerance is increasing and you might be struggling with addiction. With cancer, diabetes, heart disease, it's very common to get a family history and to tell your doctor everything you know about what your family struggled with. And for some reason, addiction's considered different, but it shouldn't be. Addiction is just like those other diseases in that if we know that a family member, um, typically going back two generations, if we know that they struggled with addiction, that can be a big indicator and a big help for a counselor who's assessing for addiction. So how do you talk about addiction with a family member? That's a really touchy subject. One important thing to know is talk about it when they're sober. Talk about it when they're not using. Talk about addiction in behavioral terms. Talk about things that you've noticed change in their behavior, in their level of activity, in their cons consequences of their life. Uh, keeping things simple, plain, and understandable is the biggest way to help your loved one. So what do you do when people deny that they have an addiction? Oftentimes this is when professional help is necessary. Making an appointment with a counselor, a family counselor, a substance abuse counselor, we live in such an exciting time for addiction treatment. There are so many options for what to do. Yes, there's the classic inpatient 28-day rehab facility. There's also 12-step uh, meetings, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous. A lot of these are really familiar, but there's new and exciting uh, treatments as well. So here at Cone, we have an IOP that's an intensive outpatient program. It's primarily group counseling. And group counseling is shown to be the most effective form of substance abuse counseling because it gets at that isolation piece. It helps people feel more understood. Another way you can treat addiction is by talking uh, with your primary care physician about medications for cravings. Right now we have exciting medications that are very safe and well studied that can help people tolerate and deal with those triggers and those cravings that happen in early recovery. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this information has been helpful in learning about addictions. If you want to learn more, go to conehealth.com slash behavioral health. Thanks again. I'm Wes Swan. If you are a concert goer at the Greensboro Coliseum and you consider yourself part of the Rhythm Nation, get ready to buy your front row seats for none other than Janet Jackson. We'll have that story and more news coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. The Greensboro Coliseum will set the backdrop for Janet Jackson's Black Diamond World Tour this summer. Tickets are currently on sale through LiveNation.com. The tour will feature an all-new production featuring new music from her highly anticipated forthcoming album, Black Diamond, set for release this year. Jackson will be performing songs from her 12 multi-platinum albums, including a special performance of Rhythm Nation 1814, which recently marked its 30th anniversary. Produced by Live Nation, the tour kicks off on June 24th in Miami and will visit major cities across the U.S. and Canada, including the Greensboro Coliseum on Sunday, July 5th. Janet Jackson is one of the most influential entertainers of the modern era. Her music has won her five Grammy Awards, two Emmy nominations, a Golden Globe Award, and a nomination for an Academy Award, along with dozens of American Music Awards, MTV Video Music Awards, and Billboard Music Awards. 
Jackson has received accolades as an actress as well as including the NAACP's Best Supporting Actor Award. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee is also a published author, dancer, business person, philanthropist, in addition to being one of the best-selling, biggest artists in pop music history. The Greensboro Youth Council is collecting new and gently used formal wear and accessories for Camille's Closet and Theo's Threads. Donations will be accepted until Friday, February 28th. These retailers provide free outfits to teens who otherwise might not be able to afford a gown or tuxedo for prom and other special occasions. Drop-off locations are located at various city facilities for convenience. Students will be able to shop for clothes and accessories March 26th and 27th. The types of formal wear needed include plus-size dresses, size 16 and up, suits, dress shirts, slacks, and accessories such as shoes, ties, evening bags, bow ties, and costume jewelry. Donated items must be in gently used condition. Items that do not meet the guidelines will not be accepted. For more information about making a donation or how to receive the formal wear, please call 336-373-4351 or visit the Greensboro Youth Council website. Greensboro Farmers Market will host its popular annual made-for-market arts, crafts, and pottery show. The deadline for vendors to qualify for priority application processing is March 31st. The show will take place on Sunday, May 3rd from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. This special early spring market is an opportunity to find unique and thoughtful gifts for Mother's Day, graduation, weddings, and Father's Day. Made for Market is the largest indoor, all-local, North Carolina-made arts, crafts, and pottery show. The market showcases hundreds of accomplished artists each year, featuring fiber art and accessories, ceramics, bath and body, jewelry, woodworking, home and garden decor, and small batch culinary products. Patrons will find ready-to-eat foods inside, in addition to food trucks, Seating is available in the Market Cafe and on the Lindsay Street Lawn. Residents are invited to share an afternoon of discovery and support local, authentic North Carolina producers. To access the vendor application, visit the Farmer's Market website. Indoor play spaces are ideal, especially on a rainy day. The Greensboro Children's Museum is always a favorite hangout. Coming up after the break, find out the new and exciting things in store for this classic learning space. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. Two decades ago, the Greensboro Children's Museum made downtown Greensboro its home. So many changes have taken place since then. Joining me now to give us highlights on what's on the horizon is Ilyasa Shabazz. She is the marketing manager for the Greensboro Children's Museum. Hello, Ilyasa. Welcome to the show. Yes, thank you for having well, me. Well, thank you for joining me. For folks who aren't familiar or maybe they haven't been to the Children's Museum in a while, are there any new exhibits that you have and what are some of your favorites that are year round? Mm -hmm. Well, our, one of our most loved exhibits is the market, and uh, we recently uh, did a refresh with the fresh market where they came in, and now we have a digital cash register in there, um, new shelving, new um, displays for products, and so, you know, it continues to be a favorite amongst our uh, visitors. And then we also added a new Volvo truck simulator mm -hmm. uh, where children can get behind <laughs> the wheel okay. of, uh, of a, a real Volvo truck and wow. feel what that's like. Um, we've also added a digital art table. Mm -hmm. um, we have a digital travel station that's teaching kids about financial literacy. And so lots of new exciting things come nice. into the museum. I like the range of things that you're offering kids. If they're hands-on, you've got the truck series. Mm -hmm. If they're all about computers, you have a lot of the digital aspects. Yes. Now, I would think that the museum is a fun place to be in the summer. Do you offer a summer camp program? Yes, we do have uh, week-long summer camps that we offer for ages 4 to 14. And those range on topics from music to cooking, gardening, um, a, a wide range of topics. And those start the week of June 8th. Okay. And um, 
they are on sale now on our website at gcmuseum.com. Okay, so you do want to register, mm -hmm. and if it's like any other summer program, you might want to start now? Yes, yeah, start now. We've actually um, sold out of our um, camps for ages four to eight. Um, we have camps for older children still available, but they go fast. And if you haven't registered, we definitely encourage families to join the wait list. Okay. Well, in order for you to have all of these fabulous programs and all of these really unique exhibits, it requires support from the community. Yes. So tell us about the fundraising gala that you have coming up and when is that taking place? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, the support of the community is huge and I can't emphasize that enough. And um, every year we're so excited to host the gala. Um, it has become the spring foodie event of the year. Um, we have more than a dozen food vendors, local vendors coming. Um, also uh, distillers who will be there providing samples for guests uh, at the museum. And that event is going to take place on May 15th okay. this year. It's a Friday evening. Are there tickets? Should people go on your website now or is it too early? Mm -hmm. Tickets are not on sale yet, but if you check gcmuseum.com slash gala, um, there will be more details as the date uh, comes. It's closer? Yes. Okay, well we will make a note of that to save the date. And it always seems like you could expand or maybe add things. Is there any construction underway at the museum? Yes, there is. So uh, a few years ago, we launched our Reaching Greater Heights campaign. And uh, it was really important, again, with the support of the community, um, for us to be able to bring three signature exhibits to the museum. And so you saw our XXL Neptune climbers go up outside. Um, we added the Water Wonders feature. And so now we're moving into that third phase of that campaign. And so we'll have a kid-focused technology exhibit. Wow. It'll be all tech, um, and that's what's coming to the museum. We're not releasing all the details just yet, so okay. you'll have to stay tuned um, to see what that is going to be. Oh, it sounds <laughs> exciting. Everything yeah. you do at the museum is top-notch. It's really um, first rate in terms of giving kids an experience beyond your usual museum and the fact that it's catered to children makes it that much more special. And if folks want to visit the museum, what are your operating hours? Mm -hmm. So we are open to members of the museum on Mondays from 9 a.m. to noon. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we're open to the public. So Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and Saturday, we are open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. And on Fridays, we are open 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. And Sundays, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. And on Friday evenings, from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And on Sundays, mm -hmm. 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., we're half off. It's so. your admission. Mm -hmm. Our okay. admission is half off. That's a good deal. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for telling us about what is in store and all the new and exciting things coming to the Children's Museum. Um, you didn't want to give us all the details, so you do have to come back <laughs> once everything's in place and let us know yes. how everything turned out. Yes. Thank that you so much. <laughs> Stay tuned for some useful information about Greensboro as we tell you something about the city. That's coming up after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back to FYI Weekly. One way to stay informed about decisions that impact our city is by attending or tuning in to city council meetings at 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of the month. The fourth Tuesday is reserved for a meeting as needed. The Greensboro City Council meetings are open to the public, but if you cannot make it to City Hall, we broadcast the meetings right here on GTN. The meetings are also streamed live on the city's website and on Roku. City Council meetings take place on Level 2 of the Melvin Municipal Office Building located at 300 West Washington Street. To review the council meeting schedule and agendas, please visit the city's website. Here's an opportunity to learn a little something about the city. Greensboro has been recognized by Lind EDU for shrinking its gender pay gap at one of the fastest rates in the country over the last decade. The group analyzed earnings data from the U.S. Census Bureau from both 2010 and 2018 in nearly 1,000 cities. Lind EDU also took its study one step further by analyzing decade-long gender pay gap changes on a state and city level to find out where the gap has been shrinking the most. 
In 2010, the gender pay gap in Greensboro was 21.3 percent and improved to 17 percent in 2018. This gender pay gap difference of negative 4.4 percent ranked Greensboro number 14 in the state of North Carolina. The gender pay gap represents the percent difference between the median yearly earnings of males and females working full time. The findings of the research report are available online at lindedu.com. Coming up after the break, we'll showcase our department spotlight, but first, prepare to mark your calendar for all the great events happening this week on the town. Hey, this is Lana. There's a lot going on in Greensboro, so let's get started. This Saturday, the multi-platinum band Tesla will be performing at Piedmont Hall beginning at 8 p.m. This concert was previously postponed, and tickets for the originally scheduled date will be honored on Saturday for this show. Thanks to their die-hard loyal fan base and their younger generation offspring, Tesla continues to tour to sold-out crowds around the world. For more information, visit GreensboroColiseum.com. Also on Saturday, the International Civil Rights Center and Museum will be hosting a screening of our latest film on voter suppression called After Selma, beginning at 6 p.m. This film dives into the history of voter suppression and the need for us to challenge it in order to preserve our democracy and equality for all. For more information about the screening or general information about the museum, visit sitinmovement.org. On Sunday, head over to the Carolina Theater for Gordon Lightfoot 80 Years Strong Tour. After more than 50 active years of hit song making and international album sales well into the multi-millions, it's safe to say that the esteemed singer, songwriter, and musician Gordon Lightfoot resides with some very exclusive company atop of the list of all-time greats. The show begins at 7.30 p.m. For more information, visit carolinatheater.com. Don't forget, the Triad Stages run of Two Wolves and a Lamb continues now through Sunday. The local elections in Hawborough and C pit old friends against each other and special interests rule. Immerse yourself in the rush of the campaign and become a participant as you vote in the election and decide the end of the story. For showtimes, visit triadstage.org. Mark your calendars for the 12th annual dance production of Let My People Go, presented by The Point Studio of Dance in association with Elise Jonel Performance Ensemble. The show's on Saturday, March 7th at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m., and on Sunday, March 8th at 3 p.m. The production is an all-dance interpretation of the 1998 DreamWorks movie The Prince of Egypt. For more information about the show, visit letmypeoplego2020.eventbrite.com. Keep watching FYI Weekly right here in GTN to find out about more events happening on the town. Welcome back. The City of Greensboro has more than 20 departments and several divisions committed to serving you, our residents and visitors. Let's go behind the scenes in our department spotlight. The Greensboro Public Library is hosting the 11th Annual Book Lover Social from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. on Wednesday, February 26th. This event is free and open to the public. The Book Lover Social offers bibliophiles the opportunity to connect with fellow readers and learn about local book clubs. Eileen McFalls, author of the new memoir, No Ordinary Magic, will share stories about her adventures in street performing around the world with the great Cellini. After a chance meeting with this charismatic street performer, she stepped into his world without hesitation. McFalls discovers things about herself, the capacity of love, and the code of outsider culture. The evening will include magic performed by Captain Jim, refreshments, music, door prizes, and book-related games. The Book Lover Social is also a great opportunity to vote on selections for the library's 2020 book club collection. Central Library is located at 219 North Church Street. For more information, please visit the city's website. Straight ahead on the other side of the break is this week's Way to Go GSO shout-out. Stay with us. As we draw to a close, we always want to end on a positive note with our Way to Go GSO shout-out. 
This week's shout out goes to the Greensboro History Museum. The museum hosted Lifted Voices, African American History with costumed interpreters sharing stories of African American contributions to the democracy. Lifted Voices is a free, family-friendly program that offers history in the first person. Visitors got to meet Ned Griffin, a Revolutionary War soldier, and Elretta Alexander Ralston, the first African American woman to be elected district court judge. The museum's galleries also include American Democracy, A Great Leap of Faith, a Smithsonian traveling exhibition currently on display. That concludes this edition of FYI Weekly, but you can easily stay connected to the latest city news by linking to us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Alexa users can subscribe to our five-minute flash briefings. Be sure to download our weekly podcast, Talk City Greensboro. And now, GTN is streaming on Roku. For all of us here at the City of Greensboro, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.